So, hello there, and welcome to this tutorial. My name is Tanya Bakshi, and this time we're going to be going over something quite interesting, uh, which is Swift databases. And not just any Swift databases, I'm going to be revisiting my most popular edition of it, uh, which is part one, and I'm going to be creating part 1.1. Uh, so you might be thinking, Tammy, what is there to improve in Swift databases now? You've even gone to the extent of images. What else could you in improve now? There is still one thing that's missing. A library. Now you might be thinking, why exactly would I need a library? Well, think about this. In Swift 2, when you have to use the do and catch, your, your JSON serialization, first of all, it's already really complicated, even without Swift 2. Because then adding in all those extra lines of code, it's just too much for you to handle. It, it's, it's amazing that you even know how to write that code. So I decided uh, to take the liberty to make a, a TBSDB class, which I'll explain in a minute, which can essentially uh, do all of the JSON uh, reading from a web server for you. Uh, so this stands for Tanmay Bakshi Swift Databases, uh, in case you were wondering. Uh, and so uh, basically what this will do is it will have a few functions and a few variables uh, which will allow you uh, to get the uh, dictionary value or array value from any JSON uh, API that's available online right now. Uh, this does not work with JSONP or XML just quite yet, but I will be adding that in quite soon. Uh, so yeah, I guess we'll go to the Mac part now, and I'll explain exactly how I've implemented this app. So just one last thing before I actually get to the Mac part, is that I'd like to clarify, uh, this Swift database tutorial was actually inspired by someone called Amrit. Uh, he's one of my subscribers, uh, he mailed me. Uh, having a little problem with Swift databases, uh, he uh, mailed me, he had a little school project, I helped him with it, uh, but then after that he also asked me to create a little API or a class which will allow us to do such a thing which like really easy JSON interaction online. So I created a TBSDB class, uh, and so yeah, I'm going to be using Amrit's API uh, with his list of users and their images. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna get started now, and let's see the code. Or well, actually, first I'll show you a little demo. And as you can see here, I have all of, I still have my other tutorials open, but I can open up uh, Amrit's thing too. So if I open this up, as you can see, we are inside of the code for Amrit's app. Uh, this, uh, most of this code, I've already taught you how to do. Uh, and yeah, so I'm just gonna get started with a really simple explanation because I'm just gonna skim through this because you've already learned this in Swift Databases part one. Uh, this is just going to be the API that I explained to you. Uh, so I'm just gonna go over this and as you can see, uh, we have the class view controller that conforms to UI view controller, UI table view data source, and UI table view delegate. Uh, after that, we have our table view, which is a UI table view, and this unfortunately has to be an optional due to Swift uh, telling us that we have to. Then we have the data as an NS array, uh, which we are not currently using yet, but we will in our viewed load function. In our viewed load function, we set the data to the data of JSON, and then uh, his API, um, Emirates API. Uh, if I open this up in Google Chrome, you will see uh, that, as you can see, it gives you lots of JSON. Again, I can't understand this. I copy this into my JSON viewer. Okay. I format first of all, so it's a little bit easier. Then I go into the viewer, and then it tells me exactly what I need to do in order to parse this out. Okay, so now let's get back to our code. So now that we're back at our code, I'm just going to make this full screen. And as you can see, uh, we have the URL here, and then this returns an NS dictionary. So then I want to get the result out of that. As you can see from our JSON viewer, we want the result as an NS array. And then I just want to print that data so that if we need to debug something, we always have that information. Then when we reload, we just do the same thing, except we also reload the table view data. Uh, when touches begin, we want to end our editing. We actually don't need this since we don't use any uh, text fields in this. 
Uh, after that, we just have our table view number of rows and section function that is required uh, from UI table view data source. Um, and we are just returning data.count here. Uh, and in our data of JSON function, uh, we are just setting request to a new TBSDB, which I will explain in just a second, in it with URL and then the URL that I give it. Uh, then I'm just returning the request's dictionary value. And this will be nothing in the dictionary if there is nothing in the JSON that it can get the dictionary value of. So it's pretty safe in that manner. After that, we have our table view self for row at index path, index path function, which is again required by the UI table view data source class. Uh, so basically, this will create an additional info cell, which you uh, should already know how is used. And then everything else is just the classic Swift databases stuff, which I don't want to go into too much depth with right now. After that, we just have our memory warning. And now I will just give you a quick demo of the app just to show that it actually works. Uh, and then right as you see that it actually works, uh, I will show you the API. As you can see, it shows all of these people, their images, their names, and their IDs and their ages, uh, including Amrit. Uh, and then I can always reload if I want to, even though there's nothing new that'll come in. Uh, and then, of course, I'm going to explain exactly how this API works. And I'm just going to go into my API first. Uh, so as you can see, I have a uh, Swifty networking .swift file. Actually, this is supposed to be TVSDB renamed it. Uh, so then, um, uh, in this file, I'm just importing foundation. Uh, pretty simple. Then we are creating a global variable called re request, which is a blank TBSDB with no link in it currently. And then we have our TBSDB class. That's something I found a little bit weird about Swift, but sometimes it's pretty helpful. You can declare this class before it's even been made. Like This variable comes before the class declaration. And it, it works, so that's amazing. Uh, so after that, let's just get back to our coding. So now we have var URL inside of tbsdb, uh, and this is a string, and we have no value in it currently. Uh, whenever we initialize with no value, we just want to set the URL to nothing so that we don't have an optional just laying around there. And whenever we init with a URL, just set it to the URL. Then when we get data, we just return uh, some NS data, and this will be an optional since we don't want to handle optionals right now. Uh, so we just return NS data contents of URL, NS URL, uh, the string URL. However, we do forcefully unwrap this NS URL because there's nothing that could possibly happen here. Uh, then there's two functions, dictionary value and array value. Dictionary value will return uh, the, uh, the JSON value for the link uh, in a string any object manner, and array value will just uh, return an array of any objects. And yeah, uh, this code will be in the description, so if you want to improve it, uh, if you want to uh, work on it, if you want to include it in your app, you're completely free to do that. Just uh, keep my name over here, as you can see. Uh, after that, that's really it. Um, and so, yeah, that was it for Swift Databases Part 1.1. Subscribe if you're new to my channel and you like my content and you want to see more of it. Uh, like this video if you really liked it. Comment down below if you have any questions or maybe some suggestions for future videos. I will get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, you could even email me at tajimani at gmail.com if you didn't get that. Uh, my email will be down in the description. And yeah, that's it. Goodbye.